Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I'm going to have a discussion about a book series that I highly enjoyed that does not get much discussion on BookTube, and that is The Circle Series by Ted Decker. And this includes the books Black, Red, White, and Green. Uh, I'll go through what each of their subtitles are and, and why. Uh, you have Black, which is The Birth of Evil, Red, which is The Heroic Rescue, White, which is The Great Pursuit, and Green, which is The Beginning and the End. And this was a uh, series of four books written by Ted Decker. He wrote the first three books that all came out in one year, and then book four came out a little bit later, and I'll address why in a second, but this is a kind of blend of fantasy and political thriller um, uh, meshed into one. And this book series is about a man named Thomas Hunter, uh, or as they refer to him in the books, Thomas of Hunter. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Thomas Hunter, who is just a regular uh, dude, regular schmo in uh, Denver, Colorado, and all of a sudden he uh, when he goes to sleep, he is transported to this other world. And it's not a dream. It's real. And in this other world, it's very much a fantastical land. There are creepy, weird beasts. There is good versus evil in this fantasy world. And uh, when he wakes up, he goes to our world. And then when he goes to bed, he goes back to that world. So he never actually gets to truly sleep. He's always awake, always working on something. And uh, he learns that the fantasy world is actually um, uh, has ties to the real world, not just Thomas Hunter, but other ties. And he tries to save the real world using the information that he learns in the fantasy world. And it's a very, very complex series that has some great thematic elements. I don't think anyone does themes in their books quite as well. Now, Decker is more overt in his themes. I think that I think that Brandon Sanderson is better at writing themes in general, but Brandon Sanderson uh, is not always importing his Mormonism into his books, whereas Ted Decker is obviously inputting his Christianity into his books, and so his worldview is very much on his sleeve. I would liken it to if Brandon Sanderson is more like Tolkien in that you can see his themes and see his worldviews, but it's not like he's hitting you over the head with it. Ted Decker is more like uh, C.S. Lewis, where it's pretty obvious what, what it is, especially the book Red is very obviously related to Christianity. Um, but the, the whole series in general, you can, you can see it. But it's such an engaging, fast-paced series. I blew through this series when I read it, and I was amazed that it does not have more discussion in, in the popular culture because it was just so, so well done. And, you know, a, a big problem that I have is that a lot of Christian authors are afraid to write secular books, if that makes sense. Because if they do, they, they have to work with some publishers uh, that might not have the same world views. They're afraid that audiences aren't going to connect with them, or they're afraid that they'll accidentally put something in there that's bad. But even though this is very much a Christian book series, you could theoretically read this whole series not knowing that it was a Christian series, because it's kind of indirectly, kind of like you could theoretically read Narnia, and Narnia in and of itself does not mention Christianity, but the th Christian themes are throughout. And I think that these books are just excellently plotted, the themes are well delivered, the character development is good. Um, uh, I was so invested in finding out what was going to happen to the characters, and I was so happy at some moments and so sad at others. Um, you know, I, I, some, some particular moments, there is a discussion of what's called the great romance in the, the first book in Black, which I just loved reading about. Whenever they talked about the great romance, I was hooked. I needed to find out what was happening there. 
this is how a Christian author can write good romance. And then you had in the book Red, you had this storyline that basically was mirroring the gospel, but in the fantasy realm. And it was super interesting seeing how certain things would unfold. And I'd be like, ooh, that's when that happens. And that's when that happens. And that makes sense because thematically that needs to happen. And then White, you know, I've, I'm a big fan of the story of Hosea which I think is a wonderful book of the Bible. And the story of Hosea is about this kind of redeeming love uh, situation. And of course, you have the movie and book, Redeeming Love, which is a a, a modern day retelling of Hosea. The movie did not resonate with audiences quite as much. And the book is very controversial for the way it handles this this concept of redeeming love. Well, the book White, I think, handles the concept of redeeming love very well. It was super enjoyable to read, and I was hooked from beginning to end of this book. And then you have the book Green, which is the circle part of the book series, where it could be the beginning or the end, depending on where you read it. I'll go ahead and say here, I think that you should read the series from black, red, white, and green. Do not, I would not put green first. I think that the, there are many surprises and many situations that will be ruined if you were to read green first. For one thing, that's not the way it was written. It was written, you know, to be written read where one, two, three, and then this is four. But the author, for some reason, felt the need to make it truly a circle series and therefore make it so that the beginning was also the end, which was really an interesting concept that I disagreed with the way he handled it. But uh, Green's the, the, the weakest book in the series, for sure. But it does add a few discussions to the table and does add a lot of world building for the series. Um, uh, but I would definitely read it in release order, black, red, white, and then green. And I think it is a fantastic series. It is not long. It is not hard to get into. If you're worried about, oh, there's these you know, terms in fantasy that I can't get into. Oh, I don't like reading, you know, hardcore magic systems. Don't worry. This is a very easy series to get. If you can read, uh, I'm going to keep making this comparison. If you can read the Chronicles of Narnia, you can read this series. It might be a tiny bit longer than Chronicles of Narnia books, but it's worth it. It is a good series. And it's, 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 uh, it really is half and half, half fantasy, but it's also half political thriller. You have the raison strain, which is essentially a virus that is escaping. And Thomas Hunter is the only person who knows about it. And he's trying to race against time and against governments to try to save humanity from this raison strain. And it's a very, very compelling and action-based storyline, which I really liked. And so... I highly recommend these books. I love reading. I loved reading them. I can't wait till the day that I get to go back and reread them because they're so much fun. So if you've read this series, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you, uh, what do you think of the covers? Very interesting covers, the way, the way that he handled them. What do you think about Ted Decker? Have you read his other books? Are you interested? This is the only four books of his that I've read, but I certainly want to read more one day. So let me know all your thought comments down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.